Hello kids, let's start with our EVS1 subject, chapter number 21, Busy at Work, Our Internal Organs. Now, let us see. Take a large sheet of thick paper about the height of a child in the class. Put it on the wall as shown in the picture and secure it with tapes. Ask one student to stand against it and another to draw the outline of the body. Now get other students to point out the right place of the following organs within the outline. The brain, lungs, heart and stomach. Here is the brain, then comes lungs, heart, then comes stomach. Now let us see about the respiration. We need air, water and food to live. It is necessary for the body to get a continuous supply of oxygen. We get this oxygen from the air through breathing. That is why we breathe continuously. In our body there are organs that carry out the work of respiration. Read their names in the diagram and also their description. Respiratory system Nose, trachea or windpipe Then comes lungs, diaphragm The diagram above shows our respiratory organs. When we inhale, the air from outside goes into the trachea and through its branches into the lungs. In the lungs, these branches divide further into smaller and smaller branches. At the end of the last branches, there are air sacs or alveoli. Between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity, there is an organ like a flexible sheath. It is called the diaphragm. The diaphragm and its movement. When the diaphragm moves forward, sorry, downward, we breathe in and the incoming air fills the alveoli in the lungs. When the diaphragm moves upwards, air in the lungs is pushed out. Exchange of gases. When the outside air reaches the alveoli, the oxygen in it passes into the thin blood vessels around the alveoli. With the blood, it flows to all parts of the body. At the same time, the carbon dioxide that is brought by the blood from all parts of the body enters the air in the alveoli. When we exhale, the carbon dioxide is also given out with the air. In this way, an exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide gases take place in the alveoli. Now, let us see the digestion. Let us now learn something about the elementary canal, the digestive organs and their functions. First, we will see about the elementary canal. The food we eat is digested in our body. That is, substance that can mix the blood are formed from the food. This process takes place in different parts of a long and flexible tube inside our body. This tube is called the alimentary canal. The upper end of this tube is the mouth and the lower end is called the anus. Even if there is a continuous tube going from the mouth to the anus, the shape of this tube is not the same in all its parts. The different parts of the elementary canal we can see over here in this picture. The process of digestion begins as soon as food is taken into the mouth. The teeth, tongue and saliva all help to convert food into a soft moist ball called a bolus which is easy to swallow. The bolus passes through the oesophagus into the stomach. 
the stomach is crescent shaped like a bag here the food is churned that means to move something here that is food with great force the digestive juices in the stomach bring about some digestive processes at the same time some disease producing germs in the food are also destroyed the food changes into a thin slurry that means semi liquid mixture in the stomach then it passes into the small intestine the small intestine of an adult is about 7 meters long the digestive juices in the intestine bring about several digestive processes the secretions of some glands also help the process of digestion as a result of all these digestive processes certain substances are produced these are useful to the body and can mix with the blood in the small intestine they are absorbed into the blood the remaining substances pass into the large intestine the large intestines of an adult is about 1 and 1/2 meters long here yeah. much of the water in the remaining substances is absorbed into the body and what remains are the feces or stools the feces collect in the rectum for some time later they are expelled from the body through the anus energy for the body as a result of respiration oxygen enters the blood in the body and spreads to all parts of the body substances formed in the process of digestion also mix with the blood and reach all parts of the body of these some substances act as fuel for the body when the oxygen in the blood reaches the different parts of the body it helps the slow burning of these substances giving energy to the body the body uses this energy to carry out all its task circulation of blood the body carries the oxygen obtained from the air and the energy giving substances in our food to all parts of the body but what keeps the blood flowing you know that the heart continually contracts and relaxes for this very purpose a network that consists of tubes or vessels that carry blood away from the heart and those that bring blood back to the heart is spread throughout the body the process of keeping the blood flowing through all parts of the body is called blood circulation innumerable substances are carried from one part of the body to another all the time that too is made possible by the circulation of blood the heart and the network of blood vessels together form the circulatory system as long as we are alive the process of blood circulation goes on continuously day and night the nervous system the functions of the respiratory circulatory and digestive systems are vital that means necessary essential for the body they have to be carried out ceaselessly that means continuously there are some tasks that we carry out only when we like for example speaking running studying playing etc you have learned that coordination means paying attention to all the different functions and ensuring that they all occur at the right time and in the right manner maintaining this coordination is the function of the brain there is a network that connects the brain with all the different parts of the body 
This is a network of nerves that carry messages to and fro between the brain and the parts of the body. The brain and the network of nerves are together called the nervous system. The nervous system functions to coordinate all our bodily functions. Other systems in the body. We have learned something about the respiratory system, the digestive system, the circulatory system and the system that coordinates the functions of all the system that is the nervous system. Besides these, there are several other systems in our body. For example, the skeletal system gives support and shape to the body and protects the important organs inside it. The excretory system expels the waste substance that are formed in the body. The working of all these systems is extremely complex but it is important to have information about them. Always remember, if the function of any one of our system is disturbed, it affects all the other systems in the body too. Thank you.